Hey guys, today let's explore how fantasy is surely one of the top motivating factors for playing video games. And we'll see the game Sims 2. Meet my Sim, Don. Don went on to get married and have a house of his own with a pool in it. So we play the Sims across a lifetime, and as you, as a player, we are invested in fulfilling the the Sims' lifetime dreams. We decide whether we're gonna have to fulfill the Sims' wants or realize their fears. And as we do this, it fills up the aspiration bar here. Success in filling up this bar unlocks rewards and behaviors, with the ultimate goal being to increase the lifespan of the Sim. I guess this is what fantasy is all about. I mean, uh, they derive much of their appeal from the emotional needs these fantasies help to satisfy. And each of us can vicariously experience the satisfaction of power, fame, success, and master the situation that would baffle us Back or be unavailable to us in real life. I just fulfilled Dawn's wish of flirting with Dina. So, and Sarah came to know about it, and it made her worst fears of infidelity come alive. So, uh, she's all tears now. And uh, so uh, Don comes up to beg for forgiveness. Uh, it sort of uh, seems to look, you know, it's going fine that she, she seems to uh, get it. But uh, then Dina comes along and messes it all up. And then it's all haywire from here on. Now Sarah becomes a, a wreck after this. And Sarah's sister picks a fight with Dina, being the good sister that she is. And it's all over the place now. It's a mess now. Now let's take a look at the Romeo and Juliet game in Sims 2. The players here can choose either to replay the story of Romeo and Juliet by having Juliet sneak out with Romeo, or alternatively they could also direct Juliet to dump Romeo and instead die, try hitting an Oberon. Hmm, wonder how that would come out. Anyways, the combination of living a fantasy and being able to tell a story in the way you want to are two strong persuasive tactics used by the creators of Sims 2.